Hi guys, Laura here from Medawani, and today I'm really excited to be talking to Dave Lombardo. Dave, how's it going? Great, great. How's it going there? Oh, so great. Very excited to talk to you about your latest project, Dead Cross. But before we do that, I have one question. It seems like you are like the king of multitasking with all of these tours and projects. Like you've got suicidal tendencies on the go. You've got Dead Cross, of course. You've got the Misfits. I mean, no rest for the wicked for you. Um, how do you get it all done? Uh, I have someone that's very good at scheduling my time. Yeah, I have a very good assistant. I, I got a great management team. And, um, you know, they, and, and also, you know, the bands that I work with, you know, they, they, they're very cooperative. You know, we share schedules. Um, you know, if something, uh, you know, clashes with another day, you know, they understand. Uh, or sometimes I might have to make a choice. You know, but I mean, that's that's the worst case scenario. But, you know, most of the time, um, you know, everything goes pretty smooth and everyone understands and is aware of everyone's schedule. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Um, for those of us who aren't familiar with the project that you're currently working on, can you tell us a little bit more about Dead Cross? How did it how did it come to be? Wow. Um, well, it was a pro it was a, kind of a surprise how the whole band uh, came together. Uh, it was unexpected. Um, I had uh, wrapped up, you know, you know this this previous project that I had. You know, I just put it to to rest. I wasn't going to work with them anymore. Um, and then I was, um, uh, I had some dates booked, um, some shows booked uh, for this band to come in from Mexico to to open up for this other band that I had. Well since I, you know, put them away and didn't want to deal with them anymore. Um, uh, I also had some book, some time booked, uh, in a studio, uh, with Ross. And so I told him, Hey, you know, this band that I had, um, which I rather not mention the name, um, they, uh, you know, they, they didn't want to record with, uh, with you, Ross. They just said, you know, we don't want to record. We don't need, we don't want to record with a producer. And uh, I don't know what it was. Maybe they were scared of working with an outside, you know, with some outside influence. But I think it's good for musicians to work, you know, with producers. So, you know, it just makes you a better, better artist. Um, and so... Uh, Ross, Ross Robinson, the producer, he said, well, that's fine. No worries. Um, what, what are you doing tomorrow? I said, well, I had time booked with you. So basically, you know, working with you, he said, perfect. Come on down. And, uh, I have this project I want you to help me with. So I walk into his studio and there is Justin Pearson and Michael Crane. So I tell them my situation that I have some time that I have some shows booked and I asked them if they would help me, um, you know, um, play these shows, you know, cause I didn't want to disappoint the band that was flying in. Uh, yeah, I didn't, and I didn't want to cancel, you know, the shows on them and they said, absolutely. So we started, you know, writing music and, and Ross started recording it as we were writing it. Um, I mean, in less than 24 hours of that band being together, we had a name, we had uh, a logo, um, and we were creating music. So it, it, it's odd how things happen. You know, one door closes and it seems like five open because a month later, Suicidal calls me. Three months later, Misfits call me. It's like, wow, all I needed to do was just, you know... <laughs> you know, get rid of that band and, uh, things would go better, you know? So it was interesting how it all came about, you know, uh, but I don't regret it cause it was exciting and it was, it's amazing. Yeah. Great. The band, as you mentioned, consists of Justin Pearson and Michael Crane, also yes. Mike Patton and yourself. And I read the bio on the Ipecac web website, which describes Dead Cross as collective experience as enough to ensure the unyielding ferocity of the music. Um, what does this mean to you and how would you describe the band sound? Uh, exactly what that says. You know, we're, we're musicians, you know, with history and, you know, and with credible history, you know, in the hardcore scene, especially Justin Pearson and Michael Crane. 
you know, these guys have been, you know, working the underground and, you know, what I love about them, they're, they're DIY, you know, which is do it yourself. And that's what I noticed immediately. Um, when I, when I was working with them, you know, if there was something we needed, Hey, we need a poster for, you know, somebody to create some kind of poster for the show that we're performing, you know, like I said, in less than 24 hours, we'd have a poster and where it was like pulling teeth, you know, in, in my previous band, uh, you know, to try to get any of the other musicians to do something, you know, to help. And um, these guys, you know, they were just, uh, they were just on it from, from day one. So with that reputation, as well as, you know, my own, um, I think that, and Mike Patton's, I think that, uh, you know, it says it right there that, you know, it's, it's going to be ferocious and um, I forget what else it says, but you know, unyielding, I like unyielding. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. I, I, I still don't know what to expect on stage, but from what I've experienced before with working with Patton, uh, it's going to be intense. And on top of that, the, the guys, you know, Justin and Mike Crane, uh, those guys are amazing performers as well. So it's going to be, you know, quite entertaining. It must be a really interesting and different experience for you before. And you, like you said, you just touched on it recently about how you've got this really agile and collaborative team who just wants to get shit done, right? Um, yes. That's got to be sort of not inspiring, but that's got to sort of renew a passion in you, right? Like it's got to be cool to be working on such a grassroots level again. Yes. Absolutely. I mean, I was working at a grassroots level, but in another style of music, but with, you know, working with Mike, Justin and Patton, you know, there's just this drive and intensity, you know, uh, from all of us, you know, that, uh, that, that's kind of cool because we get shit done. You know, when we have these emails, uh, these group emails, you know, everybody's chiming in, you know, and, and you see progress, where, like, you know, sometimes it's like pulling teeth. It's like, really? Now, how long does it take to get an answer? How long does it take to get this guy on the phone, you know, to get an answer? You don't want to move forward without, you know, without making the right decision, you know, and, and the right decision, you know, I mean, everybody's going to be happy with it. So with this band, everybody's just, everybody's on it. Um, so it's exciting. It sounds and really I, exciting, I, I don't yeah. think I've... It's exciting, and I don't think I've worked yet before with with this kind of uh, you know attitude or musicians, especially in a, in a in a in a new group. You know, older groups that've been around for a while. It's like a well oiled machine. You know, it's it, they're constantly you know working on things and and making it happen. But at this level, you know, it's rare, and I feel very lucky. Wow, that's awesome. I read somewhere that this is the most brutal album that you've ever done. Why is that? What has this rec record captured from you? Um, well, I mean, listening to it, you know, musically, when, I, when we were starting to, to create this music, um, I started noticing that, wow, this is, this is intense. You know, there was, it was different. It had a different feel to it. But and I think the reason why is um, is the climate of of the days that not the climate but you know the way the world is today you know I, I think added a lot to you know the anger and everything behind um, you know this album because when I think it was like November 2015 uh, when the Bataclan uh, attacks in Paris. At that, at that venue happened, you know, it was like, wow, you know, terrorism hit, hit home in a way, you know, home to me is the stage, you know, the dressing room, you know, that's my living room for the night, you know, so when shit happens in, you know, in a venue, you know, it, it angers me because it doesn't belong, that kind of stuff doesn't belong there. Um, so there was a lot of anger with that, uh, you know, a lot of personal things that were going on in my life, you know, were attributing to that as well. A lot of frustration and just, you know, disappointed with the way things, things around me were. 
so this album you know has a lot of anger at least for me um and i was noticing that like i said you know recording it you know it had a different had a ferocity to it it had this this energy it was relentless it was it was beating you up slapping you around and then next song picks you up again beats you up slaps you around knocks you down and i don't know it's exactly what i wanted and and it seems like dead cross for me was like a release like uh you know like a channel for me to release some anger when Dead Cross first formed, there was initially another singer, Gabe Serbian. When he departed the band, how did you set about recruiting a new singer, and how did you reunite with Patton? Well, when when everything went down with Gabe, you know, we were like, okay, what do we do? You know, so there were a couple other singers that that the other guys suggested. Um, one, I don't think he wanted to do it, or or just couldn't because of his schedule. And then we had another one that was very much interested and ready to go. But uh, my assistant asked, said, why don't you call your friend? Uh, and, and I was like, you mean Patton? And, and, and she said, yeah, you, you need to contact him. You know, let him know, uh, you know, what's going on and, and who knows. And I was like, no, that's not, it's not going to happen. Yeah, he's busy with, with Faith No More and he's got, you know, he's writing scores with, you know, for, for a television show. You know, he's busy. So I, I kept thinking to myself, no, it's not going to work. No, he won't do it. And finally, I think after three or four times suggesting, uh, I said, okay. So in, in, in a series of texts that we were, um, you know, what we were having, you know, he asked me if, uh, if I'd be interested in, in releasing Dead Cross on his record label. And, you know, I told him I would love to, but at this point, I really don't know where the album's going to land. We just don't, don't know how everything's going to come together. And, and then I texted him, I said, look, uh, Gabe left the band. You know, we have all this music. Would you be interested in, in singing? And it wasn't... It wasn't no more than 15 seconds went by. He texted me and he says, I would love to do it. Oh, amazing. And uh, I was at that moment, I was like, all oh, right, this is great. You know, and I text everybody and everybody was really excited. And, you know, we couldn't believe it. Um, so it was, uh, it was a great suggestion. And, and I'm glad I, I made the, uh, I, I'm glad I sent him a text, you know. And then, you know, he didn't know if he wanted to tour. Um, with the band and then it turns out that he loves the music so much that you know he thought that that it'd be a good idea for us to do some shows so we're very grateful for that too so we got to embrace it and enjoy it you know while it's here because who knows maybe in a you know maybe in a few months he's not going to want a tour or um you know or anything else but it seems like things are on a positive note and we're going to, you know, hopefully do some more touring. And at this moment, we're writing more music to add to our set because the, the, the set is only, you know, 30 minutes. So we need to add another 10 minutes. So probably another five songs. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So this isn't actually your first time working with Patton, as we all know. How does it feel to be collaborating with him again? Feels great. It feels great. I love the guy's drive. And uh, of course, his 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 artistry, the way he sings, and his approach not only to to the vocals and the music, but also to the artwork, um, you know, to the details. Um, and uh, I, I think that's that's an awesome you know personality to have to not just care about the vocals, but you care about you know the entire project. And uh, I, I like that; it, it's great. So working with him. Is, is definitely a pleasure and um, I'm excited to, to perform live again because, you know, when, you know, if past experiences say anything, you know, the stage, you know, intensity is going to be very high. Yeah, I, I could imagine. I've seen, um, I've seen a couple of projects um, in the past with, with Patton and know how intense those, those shows can be. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
I've listened to Graveslave a few times now and have read that this is being called a hardcore project. Now, Patton's vocals are quite avant-garde compared to that of a traditional hardcore vocalist. Now, I'm not saying that I'm a hardcore expert or anything like that, but, you know, if, if I'm to assume the rest of the album's like Graves Slave, like it's it's hard for me to hear it as hardcore. In fact, I don't really know how to define Dead Cross's sound, and that's what I like about it. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I agree. Well, you know, I mean, yeah, we don't fit that category because obviously, you know, maybe the music might fit, you know, the hardcore category, but the vocals kind of set it apart because of the melody of, you know, of the depth that Mike is able to, to write the vocals. Um, so I think it's more, it's not avant-garde. It's just that a lot of the hardcore bands don't have the creativity that Patton has. So that's why it's kind of like, whoa, it's, this is, this is really different, but because of the melody, it, it, uh, it gives you this, this feel where it's, different and not hardcore and it's because hardcore music you know they don't uh they don't spare experiment enough they're not uh um it's not not versatile but you know it, it's only one dimensional yeah i would agree with that and listening to grave slave like you can actually hear the the timing behind it you you know, I agree, is, is definitely there's that hardcore music there. But when you add someone like Patton to this mix, it, you know, I automatically hear, you know, stuff from Bungle and stuff from Phantomus and, and whatever else. And, and, it, and it changes the dynamic so much. So I, I'm curious to hear how the hardcore community um, are going to receive this. Yeah, I am too. Uh, but if... Um I think, you know, I think it's a, it's a breath of fresh air. I think they're going to enjoy it because it still has that energy that they, they love, but it's going to have a different, you know, different voice. So, you know, I, I think they're going to enjoy it. It's just going to be a little different, but it'll grow on them. Um, I, I don't think they're now, you know, the hardcore community is that narrow minded, you know, because it is, it is hardcore. I mean, it is hard music. So it's not, uh, there's no ballads on this record. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of relieved of that, Dave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is a pretty short record too. At, you know, 28 minutes. Did you mean yeah. to keep it short, sweet and brutal? Or was that just how it evolved? That's how it evolved, and we had to add Bella Lugosi's Dead to to add more time to our live set. You know, here we had written nine songs, and it's under, you know, twenty five minutes or, or at twenty five minutes, and um, you know, we were like, man, we need to add more music, you know, to our live set. So we felt that Bella Lugosi would be a good addition, you know, also to just bring you know, the intensity level of, of the live show down a bit. And uh, we felt that, hey, it's it's a good song to, to add to the album. You know, it sounded great. and It was consistent with everything else. And um, it was just a good, a good song to put in the middle of the of the set and the album, you know, to just bring it down, get a little breather and then bring it back up again. <laughs> 